Blue of fire was reported sighted from a number of scattered locations, including Costco, Yakima, Spokane, Tomato, and Whitby Islands. And unconfirmed reports as far north as Edmonton, Alberta. Two pilots stated the fire all broke up at approximately 7.50 p.m. Thursday evening. And moments later, several small fires were observed on the ground 13 miles south of McKenna, Washington. Another pilot stated there was a definite crater or hole caused by impact with fires around the perimeter. Lewis County Sheriff's uh, personnel in town trying to reach the site this a.m. Old reports on flying saucers? Absolutely. 20 years old? <laughs> that goes back a long way. Yeah. That's just about the time I got into it. Is that right? Right. When I was in pilot training, there were about uh, oh, 500 of us saw one right across the street. Watched it for about, you sat there about three minutes and watched it. And where was this at? At Lackland Air Force Base. Oh. What did the object look like? Kind of glowed. It was a, a little larger than a one-bedroom house. It was sitting right over a one-bedroom house on the other side of the street. We were on one side of the street standing reveling. And I heard him say underclass on my gaze, and we looked up, and there was a, well, it looked like it was 20 feet across. Say. Kind of glowed, kind of gave an impression of spinning. This was in broad daylight? No, it was just, you know, like a twilight. The sun hadn't come up yet. It was, you know, a real early reveling. Oh, I see. And we sat there and watched it about three minutes, and an upperclassman started walking across the street toward it, and it took off. Any sound? No. I, it, there may have been an, like an impression of sound, but I'm not sure any physical sound. Uh -huh. You know, there was maybe like an impression of a high-pitched whine, but I'm not sure there actually was any sound. I see. It was out of sight over the horizon in half a second or a second. This uh, about 20 years ago. Yeah, 1954. 54. Yeah, it was a class of 54J pilot training. Now, would this be in the summer or what? Probably just for Christmas. It's probably about this time of the year. Uh-huh. I don't know if it'd be worth getting in touch with other people to corroborate that or not. But Well, it was class of 54J, and anybody in that flight, several flights there could have verified it. Okay, what was the name of that air base again? Lackland Air Force Lackland. Base in Texas. Pre-flight training for pilots. I see. Two, three. That was at the time, I think, somebody reported that I never got an official word on it, but I think at the time that was reported to the Air Force, and we were told that was to, we were told unofficially that was to be confidential. Uh huh. And all of us were very careful. They were checking us on security all the time. We were all very careful not to tell anybody. Yes, I can understand that. Well, '54 was a real big year in this country on that UFO reports. Is that right? Oh yes, it was terrific. Yeah. Oh man, we saw that plane. I mean, it was like 30 feet away. Oh jeez. You know. No heat or anything. No, no, no heat, no heat. But it wasn't like a mirage or an illusion, you know. This thing was just glowing all over, like a big light? It, it was kind of glowing. No, it wasn't glowing like a light. It was glowing more like uh, fluorescent paint. I see. Or, or something under a black light or something like that. Did it have any discernible shape? Yeah, it was like two saucers. Rim you know. to rim? Huh? Two saucers rim to rim? It was kind of like two Frisbees rimmed around, <laughs> uh -huh. as a matter of fact. Rounded at the edges. No, but it kind of it kind of went up and then something happened. There. I can't remember too clearly, but there was kind of an impression that near the edge were like a row of portholes, but it was like spinning, so they came off as a line. I of. see. Well, that sounds very common. Does it? Yes. Oh, okay. And I don't remember the colors, but it was kind of colored. It was like grayed down purple and green and yellow or something. And the end, one of the party started walking towards it? And the thing yeah, one of the upperclassmen up. in charge of it started to walk over, got about half across the street, and it took off. You figure it was only about 30 feet away? Yeah, it was just a little, like, two-lane road, and we were, like, on one edge of the road, and there was a house all 10 feet from the edge of the road, and it was directly over the house, like 20 feet over the house. Uh-huh. I mean, it was kind of scary. I was... I, like, a lot of us felt like we were expected to be obliterated or something. Yes. You know. 
Well, we sure appreciate your calling to tell us about this. Okay. I just want, I didn't know if you'd be interested in something that old, but I... Oh, yes. We're interested in anything, especially a close approach like that. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a fairly rare thing to see it that close and for, you know, three full minutes. Right. Right. Uh, well, we thank you very much. Okay. Please keep our number handy. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yes, sir. Uh, Bob, got this thing here in the mail. Yes. Uh, the evening of November 14. Uh-huh. Bob, if I am reading the math correctly, there wasn't just one meteor, but one, two... Five. Five. Five objects. Let me ask you about that on tape. That's phenomenal. Okay. So to speak. Uh, okay, Bob Gribble, uh, phenomenal research. Okay, we have been told by the authorities, the Big A, uh, that, that there was a meteor that, that crashed... First, we were told in Centralia, then they started looking for it in eastern Washington. What do you think happened, and, and uh, how credible is this, and how many objects were there, really? Well, actually, there were five objects involved. Unfortunately, the one which was supposed to have impacted with the Earth around McKenna, Washington, uh, was the one that really dominated the activity that night. This is the particular story that was picked up by the news media. Uh, we started getting reports at 6, well, about 6.20 that evening, and... Uh, calls came in all night. Of course, we put together the pieces of this jigsaw puzzle and came up with five different objects instead of the one. And I think the reason that uh, the scientific community was not aware of these others is the fact that they were just completely uh, ignored by the news media or possibly the news media just did not know about them. Okay, now why would why would the scientific community uh, get so hung up on this? You know, why... Do you think they are, uh, the scientific community is a little too fast to write off a UFO sighting? Well, oh yes, I think that uh, the majority of the people associated with the scientific community will ignore any uh, UFO report when it appears to be a meteor. And of course, they concentrated on that particular case because they wanted to get a hold of that meteor before uh, a time lapse. And uh, <clears throat> I think that they were lacking information, uh, whereas on that particular evening, we were just getting reports from all over western Washington and certain sections of eastern Washington, and they did not have this data available to them. Okay, now, now it's, it's kind of a rare phenomenon if, if in fact, there are these, these five objects, and uh, it's kind of interesting that a lot of them appeared to break up and explode. Is that a normal behavior? Well, we don't know for a fact that they did explode. Uh, according to the witnesses, they did break up. Of course, when uh, we get a description that an object has exploded, we immediately look for this uh, clue. Was there any audible sound? Did they pick up sound waves? And, of course, in none of these cases where they broke up did uh, sound waves uh, occur, nor did the case in eastern Washington where it was supposed to have exploded in a very violent explosion, according to the witness, uh, did they hear any sound waves. So, uh, yes, it is common in the field of u ufology where these objects will break up uh, and uh, not create any sound pattern at all. Have you had any speculation at all what kind of an object would fly along, visible for, uh, well, you know, in case of most of them, over 100 miles, and, and why would an object do that and then break up? Well, <clears throat> we feel that it could be some kind of a monitoring missile, which is... Uh, attempting to pick up some kind of data in the particular area where the breakup was reported. Or we are dealing with a, an electrical phenomenon of some kind in which the object itself actually does not break up but merely uh, uh, puts off uh, electrical charges which make it appear that it has broke up. Outstanding, Bob. I'm still going to get a hold of you one of these days, and we'll take a half-hour public affairs program. That would be great. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bruce, -bye. Bye. for the, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, field team. Yeah. And I received a call at home while I was at work, and I thought I'd call back, and I called his home phone. There was no answer, so I called the... Uh, called the line on the card because I guess he's got a hot sighting going someplace and I thought he might need me. Yeah, are you one of the parties that uh, has a CB radio? Yes. Okay, well, we had an object go over the Pacific Northwest tonight about 625. Uh-huh. We've been getting reports from as far north as Alberta. Uh, 
I mean Edmonton, Alberta, and east to Spokane and south to the Dalles, Oregon. And apparently there's more than one object involved here. And uh, I was just on the other line talking to a newsman, and he says that uh, citizens band people are picking up quite a bit of information. And yeah. Apparently something's going on over around the coma right now. Yeah, well, uh, we've got a CB set up here at home, and uh, we've been uh, monitoring off and on, but uh, we keep, we've got 23 channels to scan, and uh, we can't really uh, we can't really pick out which one the action's on right now. Right. Okay, I'll get back to you if I get anything uh, important. Then yeah. Give me a call, too. Oh, incidentally, uh, I brought up Jake the other day uh, uh, an idea of contacting some of the local radio stations like... KJR, who did the big deal on uh, on the, the car statement, yes. and uh, possibly KOL, although they're not really that into it. But when I uh, I I heard, I believe yesterday in the morning, an interview with you on KOL, and when I called KJR this morning for an appointment with Chet Rogers, they said you've been in contact. Yes, yeah, okay. Oh, I see. Well, would there be any point in me going ahead and uh, and making contact with them then? Jake gave me a bunch of promo material to pass out. Uh -huh. So I was just wondering if I should go ahead and make contact with them myself. Well, they're pretty well up on it down there. I see. Yeah. I think you'll probably save yourself a little time. Yeah. No, time I got plenty of. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's basically it. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to Jake. I, I've been trying to get set up uh, on a schedule so we can all get together and meet. You know, with yes, me. I know he's talking about that. Yeah, and uh, I just got screwed up on my hours at work, so I'm not sure just when we'll be all be able to get together and go at once. It looks like right now that after 8 o'clock on a weekday night will be just about the only time we'll be able to get together because I'm working kind of a split swing shift. Okay, well, we'll get in touch with I mean, in touch with I'm a little bit confused okay. here tonight, but I've been going from phone to phone. And yeah. Well, if you do get a sighting, say, in the South Seattle area, uh, none of us have too much gas right now, but if you do get a good valid sighting in the South Seattle area, give us a ring because we got, uh, well, if nothing else, we can siphon gas from two cars to put into a third okay. and get someplace. Fine. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hi, Bob. Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry to bother you. Not at all. I uh, just had a call that I thought you might want to log in. Uh, up in Vancouver, uh, off Vancouver. I just had a call from a guy in Vancouver Island, on Vancouver Island. Okay. And they saw the same thing. Beautiful. They saw the same thing off, uh, just off Vancouver Island. It, 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 they thought it looked like a plane on fire. It was just very fiery and quite streaky. Uh-huh. And so we called in a reporter, so I figured since I saved the call and... Uh, I'll send the money and call you instead. Beautiful. Uh, what's the man's name? His name is... Okay, beautiful. I've been... Uh, I call the, the uh, Associated Press. They haven't had a thing on it. Mm -hmm. The TI hasn't had a thing on it, but I did get a call from a senior at Queen Anne High School who lives on... Uh, right overlooking the water on Queen Anne Hill. And uh, he saw the thing over the sound. Oh, yeah, right? And it was maneuvering at the time, and then by the time he got through the window, the thing had uh, turned east and just shot away like a bullet. I'll be damned. Well, uh, it looks like there's more than one, then. I think so. It appears that way. I'll be damned. And usually this sort of thing over the past, uh, we've experienced that uh, other areas that have had similar widespread sightings, which appear to be fireball type activity are usually followed up with extensive activity in the future. And, uh, okay, well listen, I'll talk to you later then. Thanks a lot, Chad. Bye-bye. Bye. Police County Sheriff's Department. Good morning. <clears throat> this is Bob Gribble of Phenomena Research in Seattle, Washington. Mm-hmm. What kind of information or recent information do you have on the so-called meteor impact area near McKinnon? Uh... Well, it was in Lewis County, uh, down by Chehalis. Oh, Lewis County. Yeah, you want me to give you the phone number? Yes, please. Okay. Do uh, you have the approximate location of that? Uh, 
Well, evidently it was somewhere near the county line, and all I had was a, we did have a complaint at, um, oh, about, let's see, 8 o'clock last night, and it said in the tonal area, which is in our county, but it turned out to be south of that. So I don't really know. Evidently it was, you know where the steam plant is down there in Lewis County? Yes. Evidently it was 10 to 15 miles west of that. But that's uh, just, you know, hearsay information. I really don't have anything definite. Okay, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, two months ago? Yeah, well, it's was, was late October. Okay. I'd like to hear about it. Well, I, I, was, I was about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was asleep. And I heard this whistling noise. Um, can you imagine a jet in a full dive? Yes. Well, that's what it sounds like. And I uh, woke me up out of a sound sleep. And I went. I didn't turn the light on because I could pick my way through the house in the dark while I was with, with my mind with blindfolded, so it didn't bother me to turn the light. Keep the lights up. And I looked out the bedroom window, and I saw this shape. Well, it couldn't have been more than 60 feet off the ground because it was bending over the top of one of the pine trees. Through it. And it was, you know, it was making a this whistling noise, like I said. And it was just, it was hovering there. And that was dealt with my people. And so I went to the front door to get a better look at it. And I went to the front door, and I opened the front door, and I looked at it, and it was about 30, there for about 35, 40 seconds. And then it just dwindled, it just took off. No, 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 no sonic boom, nothing. It just went. And, uh, um, like, well, remember the old picture, the old, the picture of the old loose roof when they had a, a, a cannon being fired? And yes. The projectile going out of the cannon? Yes. Well, that's what it looked like. Uh -huh. The only thing I can think of is it would be similar to it. And it made, and as I said, it made absolutely no, no spoofing noise or no side boom or anything. There's no displacement of air when it, it just went. But as soon as I stepped off the porch and stepped out in full view, it just, and that's when it took off. Yeah. But, I mean, as long as I stood on the porch undercover, and uh, I guess well, if there was an intelligence in there, if it, it didn't see me until I moved, and then when I moved, it, 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 that when, as soon as I came out in the full plain view, it took off. So I can only assume that uh, uh, whoever was in it didn't, didn't want to be seen. Because uh, at that hour of the morning, he's going to be up. And uh, uh, let me see. Uh, but it looked, it looked like two plates inverted over one another. There are no lights at all I can see. Now, you say about 80 feet in diameter? About 80 feet across, right. Across, okay, and a dome underneath. Underneath. Do you, do you have any idea of the size in relation to the total diameter of that dome? Oh, the dome would be about, it was in the center, and it was, I'd say about 30, 40 feet across, about half to half half the width uh -huh. of the main body of the UFO. Okay, was that dome transparent? I, like I said, it was completely black out. I couldn't tell oh, it was I see. transparent. Oh, Okay. Well, I have no idea. Well, was, it made it, was, the reason it made it, and I'm surprised, I'm surprised my wife didn't hear I had to wake her up and tell her about it. Did you hear that whistling? No, she didn't know. I didn't hear a thing. But that's what woke me up the first place was the whistling noise. Like a plane in the dive. Yes. I, uh, first thing I thought was, hey, if somebody's in trouble, they're going to crash, you know? And that's why I jumped and looked out the window. There was this, this thing. Approximately how long would you say that you had to be under observation? Well, from the window for about 15 seconds, and then after I got to the front door for about 35 to 40 seconds. Uh -huh. And then all of a minute all together then? No. Minute, but as soon as I stepped out off the porch to get a better look at it, uh -huh. and I stepped out into plain view, it was gone. Okay. Well, that was the first time I ever saw it. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to go back to the front door and see what happened. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye-bye. 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 It just reduced itself down to nothing then. 
in a manner of speaking, yes, but it, it gave the impression of being, of, of gaining distance. Yes, uh-huh, okay. Now, about how far away would that be, that object be, from, uh, say, your window? Oh, just across the street. Just across the street. Not more than 50 feet away. The tree that it was standing the top of was is about uh, oh, about 50 feet from the front door. Uh-huh. Now, how about, uh, do you have any pets? Yes. Did you, you notice that they were disturbed at all? No, they were sound asleep. They were asleep. And this thing was definitely just dark color. Uh, I, there, there was no color to it at all, I can see, because, uh, like I said, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. It was dark out, and uh, when there, was no, there were no lights, there were no, there was no coloration to it at all. It, it was just a map. Uh-huh. I could see black against bl- the sky, which was not what had clouds in it, and it was like, sort of a grayish color. So that's why I could make out the shape of it. And it was hovering over a group of trees? Oh, no, it was over one tree, one particularly. Tree. And as a matter of fact, it was so close to that tree, it was bending the top of the tree over. Okay, let me ask you this. What kind of tree was that? So, that was, uh, you know, fir tree. Oh, a fir tree, okay. That, that question might sound a little strange, but uh, we have picked up a pattern where these objects are seen ho- hovering over individual very large individual tree. Well, this is a pretty big tree. Uh-huh. But it was, I mean, it was so close to the ground that I could actually see the tree bending and the weight of whatever this thing was resting upon it. Well, then you feel there was a contact between the two. Oh, yes, there was uh-huh. definitely a contact between okay. the tree and the, and the, and the, uh, art, the, uh, art of the craft. Okay. Then during daylight, did you take a look at that tree by any chance? Oh, I couldn't get up to the top, that's it. I mean, there was nothing showing from the ground. No, nothing at all showing from the ground. Right. Mm-hmm. And no sound from this thing. Other than the the initial whistling noise right. that broke woke me up the first time. Right. Okay. Uh, and this happened about October? About the 29th, 28th of October. Okay. And in Seattle? No, I live, I live in Grumman. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's that county, isn't it? Right. Okay, is there anything you can add to that? No other witnesses? No, I was the only one that saw it. As far as I know, nobody else mentioned it. But like I said, you know, they, you mentioned that you come back to somebody else and they look to, uh, and they, the eyebrows go up about half an inch. Yes. So yeah. you... I, I'm not surprised that there's anybody else thought that they wouldn't mention it. Uh-huh. Well, we sure appreciate your calling, and uh, if I need additional information, can I call back? Well, yes, I, you can, but don't call in the afternoon or evening, because I won't be home. Okay. Anything else? No, that's about it. Okay, goodbye. Thank you very much for calling. Sure. Bye-bye.